Hello, 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 everyone. This is Disgruntled Elk back with another video. It's been a busy month for me. Been trying a lot of different stuff. Um, been experimenting and also about to move in the next few weeks. So been, uh, been pretty busy. That out of the way, we have some spice this time. And full transparency, I've played one league with almost this exact list and went 2-3. Um, but I think it was more me playing badly rather than the unique configuration of the deck. And also just had some weird matchups like Blue-Green Infect that just killed us on turn three, game one and three. So, you know, them's the beats. Um, but it seemed really promising. So you'll notice a couple things, and I'm sure I'll highlight this in the thumbnail. Solitude is a really powerful magic card. Um, usually against us, but it's also just a super powerful card. Um, I was talking to my friend. I was like, hey, you know, we want these marches. We want these removal spells. But at the end of the day, like, I would just play Swords of Plowshares. If, and Solitude is not Swords of Plowshares, obviously. It is, you do have to two for one yourself if you don't have five mana. But it is really powerful. And so we figured, all right, well, how can we make it work? Because the main reason I've never really screwed you know, mess around with solitude in hammer is because usually all your white cards are really high value. You don't really want to be pitching a pure seal paladin or anything like that. Well, I have noticed sometimes I flood and canopy lands are a great way to help mitigate that. But I played the, uh, the, sh the humans deck with shining shoal, Amiria's call and chancellor of the NX. And it got me thinking, what if we just put Amiria's call into the deck and made the deck basically mono white? I have the super light uh, green splash for a haywire might in the sideboard and i have one in the main I'm not super sold on this and actually i'm just i'm just gonna make this change right now <laughs> i'm gonna put the mem knight back in the uh in the main so so basically i trimmed i just put like one solitude in the main because i originally just had three in the sideboard and it's like whatever we're just gonna maximize our chance of seeing it so i have four solitude in the 75 we up our white count with the Amarius calls and I'm kind of about this. Um, the other thing about Amaria's Call is it does make Paradise Mantle way better with Pure Seal Paladin because you can certainly just cast this card kind of like you can cast a Cauldra if you have Pure Seal Paladin and Paradise Mantle in play and just a few creatures. So, full disclosure, this might not be good, but I think it's interesting and it's something I wanted to try out with y'all. First League was like, okay, this is fine. I think it's worth, worth recording a video and maybe people like it. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in to round one. So actually, before we hop in, I do want to touch base on exactly why I think Solitude is good right now. So the format is, it feels very fast. Um, Titan has fallen off just a little bit from its hype, but Solitude is absolutely nuts against Titan. It's very, very good in the mirror match, obviously. It's also very good against Murktide. And I think it's good against Murktide uniquely because one, sometimes, sometimes you need to kill a Ragavan, but two... Um, sometimes like sometimes those games just go really long and you have five mana and then you just get to start eating their Merc Tides and attacking with a three, two life. And so I don't hate the card. I think it's, I think it's just a really good removal spell. Um, and unlike, so in those matchups like Titan, where you're both combo decks, the ability to cast your removal spell for zero mana and still progress your board is, is a huge upside that things like March, things like path simply don't give you the ability to fight. Um, I will say that we are playing some some copium cards like Hollowed Moonlight because I think you do want some extra pieces against the creativity deck, even though Solitude is pretty good against creativity, if we're being honest. Um, but Hollowed Moonlight's really good. It's also really good against Living End, um, as is Draneth Magistrate. So we have a little more cascade hate and a little more um creativity hate than i would have in like the blue list because you just get to play like spell peers and things like that but i think now that for the most part things have been settled on what cards are really good uh i'm, I'm gonna experiment a little bit so let's uh now let's hop. all right we lost the die roll which was a bad line but the rest of the hand's very good um we have an equipper in the paladin we have an urza saga as a hammer um and we have a turn one esper sentinel plus potentially Memnite. Um, this is definitely a keep. And I'll probably just... Okay, they mulligan to five. This hand is getting better. Or maybe they're just on the mirror and they're going to kill us on turn two, which would be less good. But it's also harder to do on. <laughs> we shall see. Um, yeah, let's see what they got for us. Good luck, have fun. Yeah, okay, so this is the mirror, almost definitely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to run everything out. <laughs> there we go. Well, uh... <laughs> So they had a giver, which is good. Um, I'm glad they, you know, enjoyed the content. Yeah, Urza Saga is really good. Um, I really want to draw that 
<laughs> that's solitude. All right. I mean, this is this is not great for us. Um, so we're going to hit Saga on two. It's like, I'll double block, but there's basically no world in which they're attacking me. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go Stoneforge. So we got to kind of figure out what the plan here is. Um, we need to be able to beat their Cauldra. And I think, of course, we we, we cut the might, right? <laughs> um, so I think I'm just going to go Saga, Stoneforge, go grab. They grab. So I'll grab my own Cauldra. And then we could also grab... So then the next turn, we can make a construct. So it's either, we're either getting a hammer or a cauldra or, you know. Um, I think I'm just going to get the cauldra. The problem is, like, they can just block the cauldra, but I think it's still correct. Let's, because we don't really have a way to fight the uh, cauldra in the main. Yeah, let's just do this. And no attacks, of course. The good news is our constructs will be really big, right? So it is nice that they would have to use their giver. Yeah, I like getting Cauldre a lot because we have the Paladin to move the Cauldre onto like a Memnite. And they can't really protect from Colorless on the Cauldre. Yeah, yeah, I like this. When in doubt, just get the Cauldre when they don't have the removal spell. Yep, this checks out. They put the Cauldre in. That's pretty spooky. Now I have to hope they don't have, like, Paladin plus... I mean, they obviously... Hopefully they don't have Paladin in hand plus White Source. They didn't have to mold a five, so that was... Okay, well, there's White Source. Don't like that. Okay, so guard is eight, so we're going to draw a card at least. That's pretty sweet. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um. Okay, so I think what we're going to do here is... So we can let this trigger resolve for sure. So I can just... So if we go Paladin, Hammer, we draw a card. I'll put the Hammer on the Sentinel and attack if they want to block him. Um, and then we move the Hammer to a Memnite. And the Memnite's just going to block this Cauldra. Um, because they can't give Pro Colorless without all the stuff falling off. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. As much as I would like to make a big creature, I think this is the safer line. So I'm trying to think if... So I'm definitely doing this regardless. Um, Put in the... And then we would have... We could also just go like hammer plus put in cauldra block. But the cauldra, that seems really risky because if they just have another hammer in their hand, they attack for 25 which we would we would survive we'd block when we block 11 so that's definitely not but i don't think we can beat if they have exactly hammer in their hand anyway not gonna try it not gonna try to beat that because they have exactly one card maybe i'll draw a paradise mantle into shadow okay let's go ahead put that on the sentinel i'm actually i think i think i'm supposed to put this on the stone forge yeah because in no world are we blocking with the stone forge mm. This could be. If they have exactly like Paradise Mantle. No, no, because they can't go Paradise Mantle plus. <laughs> yeah, because that's how it works. Okay, so let's move this to a Memnite. Yeah, man, if we had drawn Paradise Mantle. Obviously, like the rest of our draws, we're not going <laughs> to complain too much. Okay, four. So they probably just get a hammer here, put it there, and then we'll figure out what we're blocking with. Hopefully they make a construct because that means we're slightly safer slightly this is a tense game though okay okay good so unless the other cards in their hand are exactly hammer land then we are not dead this turn which huge fan of not being dead this i'd be shocked if they didn't put it on the cauldra i don't think we can lose from here unless they have exactly what we talked about so i need to so if they do have 25 25 minus 11 is 14 so i would in fact just like throw an ornithopter under the bus as well yeah and now we can also just like put the cauldra on the ornithopter and get through in the air yeah, I mean, I was just up on cards and had a, a comparably good hand. So it's not much that the opponent can do here. But they are tanking just like I tanked last turn, which uh, usually these games, these either these games either go to 40 turns or to, you know, three. So <laughs> taking your time on turns, especially in these like combo mirrors, um, can really go a long way to, to kind of improve your game. Sometimes if I think too long, though, I just think myself out of things and I, I don't jam when I should and I become a coward. But um, And for anyone curious, the reason they can't give the germ pro colorless is because that would force all of their equipment to fall off. Which is why Guard is obviously very, very good, but Paladin is almost always the 
the better choice. Okay, so I'm just saying we could cast we could cast Amiria's call. Um, I think yeah. I mean, how am I not gonna do that? So what are we getting here? Um, so we just get a Paradise Mantle draw a card, and Paradise Mantle is one, two, three, four mana, five, six, seven. Okay, <laughs> and the the germ creates an additional mana. So I'm just gonna make sure that this works. So we put the German and then I guess I do this now because this will help inform the decision. Stack it however, it doesn't matter. So I did draw a land. Um, so now we have, so Paradise Mantle would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven. And then we get to make two angels. If we get to make two angels, and yes, I know I'm, I'm thinking, I'm taking all this. Uh, if we get to make two angels, that's two additional mana, at which point we can play the other hammer and move everything to it. I'm doing that because I didn't come here to not do that. Okay, so let's get a Paradise Mantle and draw an additional card here. Okay, um, let's go ahead and cast a hammer. Might have screwed this up. I don't think it matters that much, though. Okay, well... That's an extra mana here. Um, yep. So let's go here first. White. And yeah, I could go a million different ways. Don't think it mattered. Um, and then equip here. I mean, we'll we'll just equip here. Whatever. Nothing matters. I just want I just want to cast a Marius call, because who knows how long this card will be in the deck. Five. Um, seven. Amarius call. Cast. <laughs> if this if this wasn't content, I don't know what is. Okay, and so equip here. <laughs> equip here. <laughs> yep, never seen this one. That is a fair take. Um, and yeah, that should do it. It has so many texts. <laughs> Trying some spice. And for the record, I know I should just put the cauldra on the angel and get in there, but this is funnier. So say I have three, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and we have 29. Yeah, okay, it's like, I did the math, right? We, we get over anyway. Yeah, so 22, and so they should take seven here. Mm, sure, pro white probably. Yep, yep, and seven on them means I get to, all right, there we go. You know what? We could lose every other game this league, which I don't hope happens, but it could happen, and I would be okay with it. All right, so the Needle, the Other Solitudes, the uh, Haywire Might, and the March are all very, very good. Blacksmith skill, very bad in this matchup. Um, and we're on the draw, but Mem Knight can get out. And then I like trimming a couple Sentinels here as well. And I think we just call it there. The question is... We shouldn't have an issue with white card count, but I do like to just check my numbers. So, so 18 plus 8, so 30 or 26. Yeah, that should be plenty. Yeah, they never expect the Amarius call. Note, the Amarius call was not relevant or necessary, but it was sweet. And there are there are board states where making a couple 4-4 flyers is very relevant because it does make your the rest of your team um, indestructible. Until your next turn, that text so rare. Don't usually consider it. So we have an aid, multiple lands, an ability to get a hammer, a paladin. I'm keeping this hand for sure. It is very tempting to just go ginger brute on one. We can go ginger brute on one and then, yeah, that's good. Oh, wow. Okay, so I don't hate fetch shocking and getting a, so we can go saga, ginger brute, no, that doesn't work. All right. So I think we're just going to fetch shock so we can get a temple garden, play aid, and then next turn, saga, ginger brute. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. I'm just going to get the temple garden now to guarantee that my mana is all. And we did see blue, so we know spell pierce is very much likely in their deck right now. Um, and so that's the other reason I want to get the aid in before the ginger brute. But we, we shall see what they've got going on. They didn't have a, a zero drop, which was which was appreciated. Saga, all right. Yep, pretty good. Hmm. So I think it would be hard pressed to not, okay, so Shadow Spear. So they almost definitely already have the hammer. They have one hammer in two turns. 
So let's see if we can kill them before that happens. So while they're tapped out, I also like getting the Saga into play. Um, we could also put Paradise Mantle on the Ginger Brute, play the Paladin. I don't hate it, but I think I'm just gonna get in there for 11 here. Should I like to, I would love to draw a Solitude. Solitude would be Chef's Kiss, right? Okay. This does mean at least they can't Cauldra us, which is nice. <laughs> okay. Do they have two hammers? Probably. If they have two hammers, then the game's over, but yep. All right. <laughs> Man, how good would Solitude have been there? All right. Cool, cool. Um, I don't think anything changes because we want to keep the Ornithopters over the Esper Sentinels for sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They, they played it right. Just just kill me that's a good line like you could make the argument to not attack with the ginger brute but then i'm still behind and i can't like if i had played the paladin but then i'm not blocking with the paladin i don't think you play around two hammers there um it's possible they also just drew a second copy i think drawing a second copy kind of makes the most sense um yeah, and so a lot of people do like Sentinel a lot in the matchup. A lot of people that, you know, I, I tend to agree on most things with. I think I'm one of the few people who doesn't really like Sentinel that much in the matchup. You know, I get why people like it, for sure. I just think that drawing random cards sometimes not want to be... Um, it's obviously better than some other things, which is, you know, I think Mem Knight's probably worse. Um, on the draw, you could argue Mem Knight's better. All right, give me a Solitude. Let them go for a combo kill and let me draw a solitude, please. Cool. I, I agree with our opponent. M opponent has some kind words for us. We get to be on the play. Um, oh, I'm keeping this hand and we need to draw either a one drop. If we draw a one drop, a zero drop creature or another land, this hand's great. So um very much about it i'm gonna lead with drum here because we do have two equipper effects get my mana under under foot here first yes yeah, so we have four zeros uh one two three four at least four ones five ones because the ginger brute um so that's nine plus 21 additional lands yeah 30 and this this hand is just very very good if i find any of those obviously just draw like an urza saga here or uh, another land would be would be ideal, but we'll see. What do we got? Hollowed Fountain, you got it. The guard is aid. Giver. Yep, that's a good card. Okay, deal. I'm gonna do this, and it is hard to say which is the better option, but I like. Well, the giver makes this a lot more awkward, right? So if we grab a shadow spear, if we grab a shadow spear, place a guard as aid, could get blown out pretty hard. If we grab the Cauldra, I don't hate the Shadow. I kind of like the Cauldra. Eh, the Giver makes the Cauldra a little awkward too. Um, so if they go like land, Stoneforge, go grab Cauldra. We get to attack uh, and put Hammer and Shadow Spear on this, turning it into a 12-13. They can block, give pro white. They take 10 and then they can't really attack us. Could also just like get two, two Hammered creatures in play. I think I'm going to get Shadow Spear here. It is, it is close for the record. Okay. I think we need to draw a, um, a solitude here. I guess a, um, a solitude would be good. Obviously a, um, yep. Uh, I'll take an ornithopter too. <laughs> I'll take an ornithopter. All right. Okay. Deal. So this core outfitter is staying in our hand. Um, yeah. And let's get in there. We can attack, put both of those on. Yep. All right. And I do want to note that I will, um, I will solitude the ink moth in response to the Sigarda's aid trigger, because that way if they give pro white, then the hammer equip will fail as well because it'll have protection from white, which means this targeting it will get countered. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, I'm doing this guys. Like if they have, yeah, if they have pierce, they have pierce. They do not appear to have pierce. Okay. Yeah. So they're likely going for the kill here. I'd be shocked if they weren't and that should give us the win depending on what follow-ups they have so this is kind of the exact scenario i'm talking about where like solitude lets you progress very aggressively by just like playing out all your things using all your mana while still interacting with the combo deck in like the mirror match um for free obviously like this could still fall apart but we'll have to see okay i'm getting the gg 
I'm assuming that means they're conceding, but we'll see. Sure. All right. Well, Solitude would have been great. So they, they, yeah, they just can kill me or get back into it. But anyway, so uh, that's match one. Let's see how match two goes. All right. This is Disgruntled Elk back from the, uh, the future. And I messed up the recording of round two. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the beginning of the match that I'll commentate right here. And then kind of uh, drop you back in mid game one when I uh, where I picked back up and I realized I had hit pause recording. Okay, so we're on the play, which is great, and we keep this hand because we have a white source and an Esper Sentinel on the play. We also have Saga. Hand's not insane, obviously, but it is quite good, and I think it's especially on the play very much in the realm of keepable hands. So we just go ahead, bolt ourselves, play the Esper Sentinel. Pretty straightforward. And now our opponent plays Arid Mesa. Something, okay, it could be a mirror, it could be burn, it could be a million different things. They don't have a companion, so that uh, that definitely can change things. And so we can't combo them, so we just go ahead and attack for one. Pretty straightforward. And then we figure out what are we wanting to do. One thing that I should have noted was we weren't going to be able to like double spell with anything except the Ginger Brute. So I should have very likely played the ginger brute off of Urza's saga and at crunched in for at least one more point of damage here um and so here we play the Urza's saga of course and we play the esper sentinel at this point i decide i'd rather keep the ginger brute as a surprise but once again even though it was definitely incorrect to not play it pre-combat i think i probably was supposed to play it post-combat unless i'm you know afraid of a fury which is also reasonable but um Getting the constructs up to a bigger size more quickly could have been very relevant. So they go Arid Mesa for Jund Land. So very likely is creativity at this point. And basic mountain, lightning bolt. So we're going to get to draw a card here for sure. And so I'm fairly certain it is it is creativity. And I'm actually pretty happy with the solitude that I drew because that will allow us to interact with the creativity game one. Because uh, of course we can either exile their, their target with creativity or if things get really wonky, we can tag the Archon on the backswing. So now I have the choice of if I want to deploy Stoneforge plus Ginger Brute or I just want to start making constructs. And so I go ahead, put out the Ink Moth. Of course, that's the easy part. And I crack in for my, you know, my one little free chip shot. And at this point, I decide that I want to likely just start making constructs, I believe. And so we hold off. Um, I don't play out the Ornithopter because I don't think there's a lot of reason to, because if they have a lightning bolt, then it's going to kill the, the construct either way. But, you know, totally reasonable if you wanted to play out the Ornithopter there. So Renin 6, they're going to pay for sure. And they likely plink down this Esper Sentinel. Yep. Sentinel down, and of course we make a construct and step is new. So we draw a Horizon Canopy, and we can do a lot of different things this turn. I think because we made the construct last turn, making the construct here is very go ahead and make another one. We just want to make, get as much beef on the board, and we grab a Spring Leaf Jump so that we can continue developing our mana or other things. So yeah, we play out the Ornithopter, we play out the Horizon Canopy, um, and I go ahead and just attack. I figure waste case scenario, we can always animate the Ink Moth Nexus. Um, I didn't want to play out the Ginger Brute because I'd rather Ren not just ping it off, uh, especially if I can find like an equipper. I want to be able to throw the hammer on the Ginger Brute um, that way. Okay, and so we do go ahead, play out the Stone Forge, I believe. Yep, play out the Stone Forge. We decide to get Cauldra because now, if they want to address the stone forge it's likely that these constructs will live unless they have exactly prismari command um but prismari command is like pretty absurd against us at basically every stage um and so because we also don't have an equipper like hammer's not great shadow spear i don't think provides enough pressure cauldra forces them to act and even if they get an archon into play we're in reasonable shape so from here they go ahead play out they grab their arid mesa because they don't want to kill any of our... They don't want to ping any of our, you know, two plus toughness creatures, which checks out. And unfortunately, they have the Prismari command to shatter shock. Um, which, you know, not a huge fan of that, but here we are. <laughs> um, but we still have reasonable pressure. They only have 11 life. And at this point, I can go ahead and hand it back off to current Travis. Go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so... I was hoping they would go for the, oh, that's nice. Um, they would go for the creativity for one there. 
Um, I think so we can go, we can animate Ink Moth, play Giver. No, we're not playing Giver. Play, so we can animate Ink Moth, play Ginger Brute, and take down the Renin Six more or less. We can also just like hard cast this Solitude. Yeah, so we're, we're definitely playing this regardless. And I think we are, we can just attack them for one. If we put the ginger brute into play, well, so they can they can make a construct to block or uh, make make a dwarf to block. Mm, yeah, I don't hate just getting the ginger brute down. I think I want to now. I think I want to get this wren off the table. Yeah, it was really tough, but yeah, I think I want to just try to kill this wren. Okay, they're fetching. Probably getting a dwarf. Let's see if they block though. Is the question right? Because I can't just bolt this. Okay, they are just blocking fan of that and now i think i'm just gonna pass the turn here yeah pass the turn and then i can solitude if i need to but we we'll see what all's going on all right another fetch land and they have not gone either direction with the wren which is interesting okay so i'm gonna go for fable that's pretty annoying for sure oh more spells besage you okay so definitely floating mana here yeah I will, in fact, go get a, a land. Okay, that is fine. So they have Besaju in hand, um, and I don't need to cast this now. I don't think there's a reason to. It saves me one life, but I don't think that one life matters. And I'm just going to eat this Goblin Shaman, of course. And so they might not have a fetchable land in their hand either. Wow, we can almost cast this Cauldre too. So I think I'm just going to go play Ginger Brute, play Giver, play... Ginger Brute. If we play Ginger Brute, then Ginger Brute guarantees get through on the Ren, and then I attack both of these at Ren. Yeah. Um, because I don't think I want to attack. I guess like attacking with the Ink Moth is the same thing, and I think I'm fine if they want to block the Ginger Brute. Okay, and so we attack that at Ren for sure. This at Ren for sure. This at Ren for sure. Um yeah, just attack everything at Ren, probably. Mm. What if we attack everything at them? Five, six, seven, eight, nine? We could just attack them. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. That at Ren, everything else at them. And then we could also activate the Ginger Brute, which is probably correct. So we can play a land. If we activate Ginger Brute, yeah, eh, that's fine. If they block the Ginger Brute, they take five, six, seven, eight. I don't, I think I play out the, uh, okay, so we play the planes here for sure, I think. So we play the giver. They put two Arkans into play, go to eight. We sacrifice probably Ornithopter Solitude. And then one, two, three, four. I think I need to play this. Yeah, so if they want to make another construct, then they also need to fetch probably. Putting them to one. Yeah, I think just pressuring their life total as much as possible is is the trick here. Note that I will probably just discard this Cauldra. Um, because if I crack the canopy, then I'm I'm an extra turn away from casting the Cauldra anyway. Okay. Okay. Ginger Brute down. Go to one. Make a dwarf. And then can they hold up? So we're gonna sacrifice solitude and probably probably Ink Moth here. So we sack solitude and ink and uh, ornithopter. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Sacrifice, Solitude, and Ornithopter. This becomes a 2-2. Two, two. They go to 7. So there are lines that let us win from here, I believe. Yeah, okay. And they can't besage you again because it's in the grid. Yeah. So there's probably a spot this game I could have attacked. Oh, gross. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, Sack, Solitude, Cauldra, and I would imagine just Sack this Ornithopter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're probably dead here i was supposed to float mana with the ornithopter uh no yeah just float mana and then crack the canopy but all right well let's start here i guess we can draw again no harm in it <laughs> perfect all right so they get they got us game one all right and let's see how game two and three go so good cards solitude's very good because also the game can just go really long um i like skills a lot because it acts as both a counter spell and uh, a protection spell um, I don't think we want the Haywire Mites because we didn't see any white, so it's very unlikely that they have, um, it's very unlikely that they have Leyline Binding. So we want to bring in like these seven-ish and we want to cut Memnites for sure. 
I think Giver is pretty medium. Oh, thank you. Giver is pretty medium. We can also definitely cut like a drum and probably one to two ornithopters. And that would do it. Needle is tempting because they do have Renin 6 and Basaju, but I don't think it's where we want to be. So, all right. Yeah. And Hollowed Moonlight, of course, effectively counters creativity and we draw uh, a card. Okay. Um, hand's not great, but it is turn one Sentinel, turn two Stoneforge. Um, not going to complain too much. All right. And your turn, opponent. Obviously, I would like to draw like an Urza Saga here. That would be excellent. Okay, it's a white card. I am tempted to go just attack with Sentinel and then play Stoneforge Mystic or uh, and then just play Windswept Heath Pass. And then we actually get to hold up skill, um, but can also just go Stoneforge, hold up skill. Yeah. So if we're going to do that, we probably... No, we play out the Windswept Heath for sure. Yep. All right, got a triome probably. I was like, I would be surprised if it was anything else. So they have green, blue, and red mana currently. So are they getting a Renin Six into play here? So I will draw a card. Okay, and I'll probably blacksmith skill this in response. Um, we can also just like, like, do I care that much about the Esper Sentinel? I feel like I don't. I feel like I care more about going Stoneforge Mystic, hold up skill. Yeah, that seems right. Okay. We're gonna let that go. And let's just go ahead, Temple Garden now. This is not a deck that can play Blood Moon that we're fighting. Okay, so yep, and yep. And I'm just gonna get a hammer here. Keep it really simple. Yeah, so hopefully we just get to Cauldra attack and then the following turn, like aid, hammer, attack again. Okay, they are shocking. What are they doing though? Are they like Prismari commanding here? Yes, uh, deal two damage. Yeah, so I will go ahead and protect since we would really like to get this uh, this cauldron into play. We get to make, what, two treasures? Or are they just looting? Yeah, that's kind of terrifying, but we can answer it at least. We hit a land here. Okay, not a land. Um, We do have an extra aid to pitch now. I think we just cauldra hit them for five. And then if they like persist the Archon, we sack the Stone Forge. Yeah. So they take five, go to nine, then go to 12. And then they are forced to block and take a ton of damage. Yeah, seems good. Yeah, and I'm just gonna pressure them. I do think I will actually play out the Sigarda's Aid right now, because if we play out the Aid, then, because I am pretty pretty tight on mana here, I guess I don't want to turn off auto yields because I might sell it. <laughs> So Hammer is currently the most important card in my hand. Paladin is a second, close second, but we have multiple equippers, so I'm not super worried about that. We are short on Metalcraft as well, so that might be something to consider. Okay, getting a Bloodstained Mire back. Yep, Bloodstained Mire in hand. What do you have for me? Okay, they concede. I like it, I like it. <laughs> um, okay, so on the draw, I think things are a little bit different. I think we can probably trim Esper Sentinel still. I think I'm just gonna just gonna run it back. Maybe maybe play a march. Um, but I don't think so. I think the solitudes are are good enough. I'm just gonna run this back. Obviously, Esper Sentinel is markedly worse against Renin Six on the draw. Um, this hand's really fast. I'm gonna keep it. Jam. So I also don't hate going could just go drum here and then next turn we can go sentinel tap that aid saga and then we can hammer in response to like a, a damage effect i don't hate that yeah i think i'm okay with that if i had another like one mana creature i would have just played the sentinel there or a zero um but our hand just like does nothing the following i think two turns pretty pretty hard to justify yep run in six all right pick up your stupid land you big big meanie okay so they have a wooded foothills in play or in their hand one of those okay so i think i'm gonna lead with ornithopter here yep all right so they are f6 got it okay and could just hammer on the esper sentinel here and then they have to cast a spell yeah i, I like that because now they have to cast a spell to address the problem and we draw a card um, rather than they can tick down on the Ren on the Sentinel and then we're forced to put the hammer on it, you know, unless they can pay 11 generic mana, but that seems unlikely. All right. It's when they're like, Brotherhood's end and I pack it in and move on with my day. <laughs> All right, Paseju, yep. I will, in fact, go get a Temple Garden. Could get a Plains too. 
I think I'm just going to get a plane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Five. We are only two mana off of casting Amiria's Call, which is pretty rad. Okay. I'll take a Solitude. I'll take a lot of things. Okay, Hollowed Moonlight's honestly a really nice pickup here. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think there's a reason to do anything. We just pass the turn. And so one thing to note <laughs> is that um, you should Hollowed Moonlight after you make a Construct. <laughs> you got it. Okay, so they have Pesagey ready to go. They probably hit the Urza Saga here. My Kingdom for a Blacksmith skill if they don't Pesagey us. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, your stupid Dwarven mine. Let's make a Construct. Okay, yep. let's get a Planes here. So we will fetch here. It is unfortunate that we're about to run out of fetchables, um, like literally right now. What you gonna do? Okay, okay. So they don't have Besaidu right now, right? Yeah, I mean, one, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If we get the mantle, we have six mana. I don't think that's the play. <laughs> um, they probably have some number of. Could also one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I mean, I think we just get a hammer here. Just hammer and pass the turn. Also, hammer past the turn seems pretty bad though. So let's go ahead and just attack with both of these. Probably. Yep. Let's uh let's put a hammer into play. Put it on the ornithopter and get blown out. But I don't think there's much we can do about that. All right. So hit them for ten, and then they lose their. Okay. Honestly, that went better than I expected. <laughs> Um, if we draw a Cauldra or a Stoneforge here, we're in really good shape. Um, even if they kill the Ornithopter, we still have a reasonable threat in the Construct. Yep. And they are dealing damage to themselves. Like, this Stoneforge is a threat. Um, so it is tempting to just, like, Hollowed Moonlight right now. But yeah. All right. You got it. You got it. Fable is super annoying. Um, hmm. Gross. Yeah, we need to, so if we Fable, if we Hollowed Moonlight, then they only have one blocker. See, I'm just going to do this now, just cash it in. If they have like Mana Leak here too. Okay, there we go. That's actually really nice because we can just cast that thing. Okay, I'm glad we held this in Maria's Call, just in case. Um, <laughs> do we just shock that in? That's six mana? Like, because we're attacking with all three? They're probably going to besage you the Ornithopter and block the Construct. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get in there. At you. So yeah, I assume they block there and then kill the Construct with the besage you. Uh, and I will fail to find, unfortunately. Okay. Honestly. Okay. One more land and we're just going to cast a Maria's Call, which is rad. <laughs> what is this game? This is awesome. I mean, they, they've had the Ren besage you loop going so even if we lose like i don't feel too bad you know okay yeah indomitable creativity not not great at this spot <laughs> with no creatures and stoneforge you are a mighty squire yeah i will absolutely just cast a Maria's call like let's go yeah besage you in hand if i'm then i'm probably killing the the hammer here if uh like when when they besage you right okay yep yeah, yep yeah. yeah i mean I'm going to cast this. Do you have Mana Leak? If you have Mana Leak, you have Mana Leak, and that's fine. Woo! Let's go. That's awesome. So this is a removal spell that's going to attack for lethal damage, and it countered the Indomitable Creativity. All right, Solitude. All right, let's go. Illegal targets. And one more land, and we get to Amaria's Call. This is some... Yeah, so they can besage you the Ornithopter, and then we still crack in for lethal. This is nuts. If we win this game, this is bonkers. But, like, I mean, they still have to address... Solitude, let's go. Um, yeah, so Solitude obviously there. Um, if it was a march, um, then it could have killed like a germ or a, you know, a little dwarf, but it then doesn't present lethal. Um, okay, okay, Solitude. Also, Amiric's Call, let's see. Okay, we would have also cast Amiric's Call next turn. All right, I will see y'all in round three. All right, we are back for round three. Let's see, we're on the play. Excellent. <clears throat> love that, love that. Um, Yeah, I mean, we have... Ink Moth, an Equipper, and a Stoneforge. I will just probably just uh, fetch up a basic planes here, play the aid. We're against Gigantha, which could be a bunch of different decks. So I'm not going to too much. It could be Domain Zoo. It could be like a Grixis Death Shadow. It could be Tron, depending. Okay. 
Grixis Death Shadows where I'm leaning right now. Okay, just Prowess probably. Uh, oh, it's the uh, the Eight Blast with Shrapnel Blast and Galvanic Blast. Cool, cool. All right. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's go ahead. That's actually not a draw. And I'm just going to go get a hammer here. And so that's nice because we can play out the aid first. Yeah, I don't know. probably not playing out the aid. Hmm, okay. Okay, so they do still have white mana up, or uh, red mana up for a blast. But we, we can basically go planes, aid, animate the ink moth, and attack. I guess that still puts us shy on mana. Okay, that's, that's pretty nice. Yeah, so we flash in the mantle first, I believe, after playing this planes. I wonder if we flash in the planes, or if we put in the mantle on the stone forge. Yeah, put that on the stone forge. Okay, so now we can play aid, we can animate, attack, and then we can put a hammer in after blocks. And if they kill the ink moth, then we just put the hammer on the ornithopter. Yep, all right. Okay. <laughs> that was almost so bad. Almost clicking through combat. Really, really bad. Okay. So we put the first trigger here. And then the second one, I think we just put it on the ornithopter. So if this resolves, then... Uh, okay, that's fine. Okay. So I will go ahead and make a 10-12. And we're not in a bad spot here. We're at 18 against the blast deck. They can obviously make constructs, but we're we got a, a big, big ornithopter. If we draw more equipment, we're in good shape. Um, yeah, we just we should have a live draws here as well. I'll take a cauldra. I'll take a stone forge. Okay, DRC it is. Okay, crack in. So they can make a one, two, three, four, four. That's fine. And I think I'm gonna go Paladin, move the hammer to the Stoneforge Mystic. And if that works, then I'll move it to the Paladin and they probably kill the Paladin in response. Fine. This way we have a really nice blocker on defense as well. They have two cards. Um, yeah, once again, like, all right, so go ahead and move this over here. Play the Windswept Heath and pass the turn. They know we're empty handed. Fine. So make a construct, I would presume. No. Okay. Popping the bobble. Okay. What you got for me? Uh, they targeted. Um, so I will just go ahead and fetch right now. In case they have a needle, I'd rather not get needled off of land. Because right now, if we draw a solitude, we can just horn a thought around. All right, spell bomb. Pretty good card. Tapped den. You got it. Pumped up. All right. Yeah. You got it. It's dead. Okay. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> not happy that they killed all my dudes, but could be worse for sure. So now we crack in. They have to block. We're going to go to 14. So we, I would really like an equipment. It's not bad. Um, I think we have to here. So if we attack, um, they can take 12. No, they can't take 12 <laughs> because they die. Um, so they block here probably in the next turn. They untap um, and attack for three, seven eight nine and if they have exactly galvanic blast or uh, exactly shrapnel blast then if they have exactly shrapnel blast then we lose i'm okay with that i don't think waiting does a whole lot i'd rather just get things off the table okay yep might as well put that there just in case it's gonna be close this is definitely a matchup where i like all the solitudes though can gain some life axes as really cheap interaction um if they reveal gigantha game two we'll also know they don't have fury yeah so galvanic blast and i'm dead or a uh, trap blast looks like that's exactly what they got oh man them's the beats them's the beats all right all right yeah we needed a uh, we needed like one more live draw Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> sure. They they have us dead multiple ways. All right. Cool, cool. So definitely want the Solitudes. Uh, Sanctifier seems really good. Um, Blacksmith skill, maybe. And maybe Haywire might as just a, like a blocker that can gain some life. Um, I think Cauldra might be pretty medium here. I don't hate Outfitter because they seem to have trouble once a creature is equipped, actually getting it off, getting off the board. So I probably like these eight-ish. Um, Memnite's probably pretty good. Esper Sentinel's probably pretty good. Ornithopter I'm pretty medium on. Um, can also trim, honestly we can just trim Aldi probably, um, because they're like, they're definitely a Ragavan deck, so gets a little, little sketchier. Um, we could trim the core outfitter just because, eh, maybe we don't need Sanctifiers, maybe just two. I think that's fine. Cut these for these. And I want the blacksmith skills to protect the, uh, like a hammered creature or a, like a shadow spear. Seems really good. Yeah. This, 
All right, and yes, I will be on the play. Um, are they revealing Gigant? What you got? Do you do you have an elk friend? Okay, so they they have Gigantha in their deck still. Um, hmm. This is really interesting. I think this hand's not good enough though. Uh, this hand is definitely good enough. <laughs> um, so I think I'll just bottom this Ginger Brute here. Yeah, because I think we want to hit all our land drops. I like that the Ink Moth. Um. We could bottom the Ink Moth. We're just gonna go get a Planes here. Go get a Planes, play an Esper Sentinel, and then next turn, probably Saga Ginger Brute crack in for two, maybe. That'd be exciting. So they keep seven, and now they're in. Let me, let me go. Kept seven, what a jerk. They could have some really hateful stuff. Um, I don't know what the current sideboards from them look like, but they could have things like Shattering Spree, which that's gross, but <laughs> what you gonna do? Okay, Ragavan, that's getting blocked for sure. Oh man. Um. So we can, I mean, we're definitely blocking. So I think we just go Saga here and play out the Ginger Brute. That way they need two removal spells to get through. Uh, we could play out the Hammer, which I don't actually hate. I mean, no, let's wait on the Hammer because if we draw, if we, if they don't attack, whatever reason, which I'm shocked they did. There you go. <laughs> Give me a Blacksmith skill. Okay. Jeez. Yep. All right. Yep. Like I said, they could have Shattering Spree. <laughs> um, so I think now I will just make a Construct. Probably just fetch here. Yeah. You want that one? <laughs> I don't want that one. Uh, and I'll play the Arid Mesa, of course, because that way if I am able to find a... Oh, okay. Sure. Epicure. That's not that bad. All right. Okay. Honestly, just Stoneforge. So if we play Arid Mesa, go get a Plains. We can make a dude. And then next turn... We can float mana, go get a shadow spear, put it in, and then play hammer off the floating mana and play pure, pure steel paladin and go real hard from there. And they don't have a way to kill an enchantment generally because they're mono red. So I think we can probably pass here. Yeah, so we're going to make a construct and we'll untap float. Yeah, I like not running out permanents because it can make their turns potentially awkward, hopefully. I will let them have the Ragavan hit, unfortunately. Okay, you got it, you got it. Swift Spear, that's a good card. Yeah, Prowess Power, let's go. <laughs> and even if they hit a Plains here, I don't care. Oh, just, okay, sure. I will take three damage. There he is. So did he not have removal? I feel like they don't have removal. If they didn't attack with Ragavan, because if you have removal, you just like attack with Ragavan, get the interesting, okay. That's really nice. Um, so if we go, if we go get a spring leaf drum after making a dude, we can shock that in, play paladin, um, play paladin, and then, hmm. Yeah, I don't think that I'm doing, I think I am making a, huh. If we make a dude, then we can't pallet in this turn. Um, I think we just float mana here. If we float mana, we will get probably a shadow spear also just get a, another hammer shadow spear seems really good too um yeah i think it's probably hammer it's gonna be hammer because that way we can like double protect the paladin from a removal spell um and so we will play second hammer and then play paladin play paladin equip hammer to construct okay yep they're gonna take the bait here. Shrapnel blast that. Love it. Love it. Yep. Because the Paradise Mantle is like we we basically hid the fact that we had Metal Cry and we get to draw a card. Oh, okay. That's that's a nice hit here. Um, and boop, boop, boop. No reason not to do that. Um, yeah, can't do anything else. So pass the turn. And then of course next turn we will Stone Forge up a hammer or add a Shadow Spear. Okay. That is not a, <laughs> that is, that is not a smash to smithereens. Um, and they can't activate the blood. So this should do it just about. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll definitely do it because we just animate Nexus, move everything onto it because they don't have a flyer, right? I'm not missing anything crazy. Yeah, they are empty handed. Attack for 21. In yeah, okay, cool, cool. So there we go. Yep. So definitely like keeping all the Memnites and all the Esper Sentinels. Um, uh, yeah, we want all the Sanctifier. Maybe we don't need all the Solitudes. Um, maybe on the draw, we want one less skill because it can be a lot harder to hold up. 
think I'm okay with that. I like keeping the givers because they do block Ragavan. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna keep this hand and we're gonna draw. We are gonna draw. We're gonna draw a colored source and it's gonna be even better. Okay, not quite, not quite. Play out this Memnite, pass the turn. Once again, we're gonna draw a land. The upside with this hand of, have, of hitting a land pretty, pretty high. So I will not, <laughs> I will, I will decline. Okay, honestly. Could be a lot worse. Um, I think I'm just going to pass the turn here and hold up Solitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're not winning that race, so I'm fine just doing nothing. Thank goodness Solitude costs zero mana. Did we board out the good Solitude or one? Oh no, we boarded out We boarded out my favorite Solitude. Did we not? No, we boarded out a skill. Did I? Okay. <laughs> I thought for a second that I didn't board out um, enough cards. I think I'm fine just taking one here would you like to pay i'm thinking i could just solitude right now and then they can't pay and if they use another removal spell they still might not be able to pay all right cool so we're drawing a card here uh nope nope that you need to pay three <laughs> okay all right another another card that we can pitch to solitude but yeah we just we just need to hit a land if we can hit a land i'm really optimistic about our chances alpine moon not a huge fan so probably gonna name Urza's Saga here and if they hit yep you got it are we I assume we're casting lightning bolt too they could hold I feel like they're just supposed to cast it now no all right yay all right uh I'm just gonna go to basic planes and I'm gonna play a sanctifier and back out here delirium um and if they would like to could attack with a memnite see if they want to trade a drc I think I'm okay with that add Mm. I'd rather block with the Memnite. Any equipper is still good. What you got? Can't imagine it's an Eidolon, but I've drawn a lot of mountains. Yep, Shattering Spree is a gross card, but all right. Yep, this time it costs more. Okay. Yeah, I was like, mm, really? Okay, two Shattering Sprees down. I guess last game they Shattering Spree us, right? So clearly, based on their track record, Shattering Spree is a card that they shouldn't play. Okay, so block here. And then I think I'm just going to Solitude. Yep, Lightning Bolt me. All right, you got it. Yeah, we're just gonna solitude the the Swift Sphere of four damage. Save ourselves three points of life, which is quite a bit. We're down to two cards. Should have solituded in response. It's fine. They gained one point of life. So if we if the game ends with <laughs> with them at one and us at zero, then so eat both of their threats. I go to ten. That's not a bad one. Um, I think I'm just going to. So here, so if we go Stoneforge, attack for two, we could find, yeah, I think it's Stoneforge here and probably just get a hand. See, if we do go Paradise Mantle, we need like very specific draws to win with Paradise Mantle. So I'm just going to get another hammer. Um, and Stoneforge probably will just get under the bus if they attack with a haste threat. Put Gigantha. All right. So yeah, they had... Light up the stage, Swiss Spear, Swiss Spear, DRC, Bolt, Shattering Spree. All right, can't can't complain too much, but we'll see we'll see what else we draw since we do have Solitude in our deck. Experimental Synthesizer. Say leave play or leave the battlefield. Boo. <laughs> I was hoping it said like when it hits the graveyard. So they can create a two-two um, white samurai creature token with vigilance. Okay. Yeah. So they're gonna do that to light up the stage. All right. So this for your Galvanic Blast, stop. At least they're low on, <laughs> low on artifacts. Sheesh. I will snap. Um, I think I shock to effectively stay at eight and then I can hold the Sanctifier back. Yeah, so if I go Shadow Spear, equip to Stoneforge, attack, gain two, they can't really block. And then the following turn I can go, I still need to hit a land to do that. Um... I mean, I stay at the same level either way, so it's probably correct to just jam it. Yeah, because... All right, I'm trying to think. So they activate only as a sorcery. That's what I thought. Two. Back to eight. Okay. See, so yeah, if we hit a land, we can play Hammer Hammer Paladin and win the game. Um, but we will see what... Red, red. Shrapnel blast me. Okay. Ah, oh. <laughs> good game. I think I... I don't think I could have done anything differently this game. If I had a solitude, would that have made a difference? GG's. If I had made a, if I had, had a solitude, now I gain two, and then they could still gal blast me, right? Man, the runners. Oh, okay. Well, that was a good game either way. All right, so let's go to match four, and I'll see you there.
I will acknowledge that my keep in game three was pretty greedy. I felt like our, our chance to, to hit was pretty high, but probably was supposed to just throw it back, which is fine. All right. So we do have a turn one. I kind of like this hand. I'm going to keep it. Gigantha. So it's not scam. I'm going to just go saga uh, drum and then hold and then don't play the ornithopter. Playing the ornithopter would be pretty rough. Yeah. So we're going to start making constructs on turn two and they'll be pretty good size constructs. Okay. So probably domain zoo would be my guess. White source. So I don't think I actually want to play the white source here. I think because basically we want our, we want as much white mana as possible when we untap. So yeah, we're just gonna lead with Ink Moth. This also means that the Ink Moth will not be summoning sick next turn um, because we could potentially go for the kill, right? Yeah, we can um, We could play that, tap the drum, and that's one, two. Yeah, so we could potentially go for the kill next turn. Yep. Um, so right now the constructs would be three threes, so I am gonna play this out. I'm forgoing a card off the Pure Seal Paladin, but I don't really care that much. I'd rather just put these out of bolt range. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's it's almost definitely domain zoo. Um, so I will I will board accordingly. It obviously could be something different, but we're boarding. Like I'm not too sad about what we're boarding, even if it's not domain zoo, because we're boarding in just good cards. Like just actually just good cards. Um, they do have leyline binding almost definitely, so I don't hate the high wire might. Um, I definitely like these four cards. Now what's coming out? Uh, I think at least a couple ornithopters. These are not. <laughs> Um, so two Ornithopters and four other cards. Um, I kind of like having all the drums for a little bit extra speed. I think we can trim a couple Sentinels on the draw. And then maybe a Core Outfitter and maybe another Memnite oh, or another Ornithopter. The reason I'm not putting the Memnite is because they're almost definitely a Ragavan deck. Um, yeah, this is... This is, um, I mean, yeah, we have we have a Hammer and an Equipper and we have Interaction if we absolutely need to. You got it? Okay. So we might might be killing that thing. It depends. Getting, them getting ahead on mana is pretty rough. Planes. Then I think we go drum here. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, so we could go drum and then <laughs> solitude, make mana, aid as well. I don't think we do that, but I will play the drum here. Um, and I think I think we just let them hit us here, unfortunately. I really don't want them to, but... I think I care more about tagging their Kavus and their actual threats a lot more. Yeah, okay. Deal. Also, sometimes... Wait, whoa. Is this like a loam deck? Okay. I, I don't know what's up anymore. <laughs> okay. Don't hate that. Um, I will play out the aid right now. Because if I don't play it now, I might have trouble um, getting it into play later. And I will just pass the... I don't think there's a reason to run out the Ornithopter since I'm like definitely not blocking with it. Yeah, this could be like a Slogurk five color deck. I don't know. Or this could just be like a utility land with the run in six. Mm. All right, yep. Yeah. Hit me again. That's really annoying. <laughs> That's super annoying. Teferi. Stop. All right, yeah. Bounce my saga. All right, yeah. This is super. <laughs> All right, so what's the plan? Oh, okay. Um. So I think it's just like Urza Saga, Stoneforge Mystic, Go Get a Hammer, Ornithopter, Solitude, Pitch, Amiria's Call to Kill the Giver. Yeah, yeah, seems good. Yeah, let's get us a hammer. And then play the Ornithopter. I'm going to put it on. Um, And I'm holding here because we might just cast Solitude in the next couple turns. All right. Yep, yep. My apologies if the bumping. Yep, all right. Yep, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll take three. Two, twelve. What you get? Stone Forge. They're just gonna like have equipment. Okay, so that makes sense. Scion. Okay, so that I probably will just just kill. Here. Okay, let's go ahead and get a planes. Man, really don't want it right now. I'd really rather wait a turn, but I think we need to get it off the field. It's just too much power. Yeah, pitch that that one. Get that out of here. Um, and I will do this if they want to tap the, the giver, fine. But if they have a removal spell, then yeah, not a whole lot I can do. Strangely, they didn't attack with the giver, but okay. Right, windswept heath, good, didn't want that. So definitely making a construct, it's the easy part. Um, and I think, I think we're just getting a ginger brute and tapping the teferi. Don't hate it. All right, tap the teff, so that way it can't bounce the construct, block the construct, or block the, the ragavan unless they protect it with giver. Yep. All right, yeah, so it is just domain 
but with a bunch of Teferis, or at least one Teferi. Um, I'll take a... <laughs> there are obviously a lot of good draws, a lot of problematic draws as well. I like I like kind of where we're at. Okay, second Ragavan. Interest. One, two, three, four. We're definitely not casting card. Perfect, perfect. Um, right here. Mm, yeah, I'll go to one. Yep, all right, well... We were not. We were not. Uh, actually, I guess we can. No, we don't. We don't do this until the, the target. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nope. All right. So we definitely want the Haywire Mites. Um, uh, I'd actually, I actually really like the Esper Sentinels quite a bit. Um, I think we probably just trim another Ornithopter in this case. Um, I'm fine with everything else in the deck right now, which is a problem. Maybe we don't. Haywire Mites fine, but I don't think it's great. I'm, I think I guess I will be on the play. Um, this can't cast spells. This can cast all the spells. So we can, I think we bought him second pallet. Um, I think we just turn one Ameria's Call as a land Memnite. Actually, we can just do it with right? Yeah, this seems better. <laughs> And your go. You go, Yugi boy. So we can go turn to Stoneforge Mystic. Probably just go get a hammer. Keep it simple. Get us a hammer. So next turn we can um whip like that and then cast paladin. A little dicey. Okay, another lightning bolt. You got it. Ooh, okay. Okay. I like that. They also only have three land types, which is not a lot of land types. Um so next turn we will have white 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 um yeah so if we hit a land so say they kill the esper sentinel right if we hit a land we can go we hit specifically a white we can play paladin animate ink moth but we need to have the hammer already in play yeah all right i'll do that then territorial kavu deal all right well <laughs> i'm just gonna go for the thing gross Nashoba brawler all right yeah well <laughs> and they're hitting Sentinel and that. All right, might as well float a mana. Oh, yeah, I guess I should have noticed they didn't have Gigantha. All right, so I'll just suit this up. All right, eh, get in for one Infect here. So I don't think they have any more lands in their hand. Otherwise, they would not have played the Besaju, which is both good and bad. It's good because they have a lot of spells in their deck they potentially just can't cast. It's bad because it means they have a lot of spells, not blocking. So any any uh, equipment off the top is obviously really good. Yeah, we need one soon. Mm. all right so we can we can chump one so we need yeah we need and we're gonna chump with one because that way we don't die in two attacks yeah because we need to find an equipment either way i wonder if the, this card's got to still be bugged and that's why they're doing that yeah yeah no trample lucky us so we take five go to eight <laughs> detention sphere oh no oh my gosh we're so close um okay so yeah i think we're dead unfortunately if we had one more land oh man solituding one of those would be so good but yeah i think i think unfortunately we're we're losing this one we needed to find another hammer or another like, a, like any of the hammer effects or an urza saga would have done it but yeah the bolt bolt into force of vigor is pretty rough and they pitched yeah, another beater all right so i'm just thinking yeah because we can't solitude we can so we need to block two creatures um so we can animate block block and then so technically we're not dead if we like runner runner hammer shadow spear all right if we're not dead then i won't concede and this is assuming that yeah if we hit hammer shadow spear or vice versa then we're not dead um, unless they you know have interaction and then we're super dead <laughs> They just have all good cards. They must just have all good cards in there, and that's not good. Yeah, if they're not looting or rummaging or whatever it's called, then I can't imagine we're we're long for this world. Are they scared of Nahiri? I don't know. All right. I'm not, yep. Nope, not that one. The bigger one. Take four. Go to four. <laughs> <laughs> and the last card's probably just like a ley line binding. All right. Um, GG's. All right, that was close. It was close. It was pretty good. Was that the league? No, I think we have one more. Yeah. So we started strong. Not not quite as strong anymore, but we'll see how we can uh, we finish up in round five. All right, here we are. An entire chest and our entry fee is on the line. Let's hope things go well. <laughs> we did win the die roll, which is sweet. Um, we have a Saga, an Ink Moth, an Aid. This is a pretty easy keep. Kahira, it's control. All right. Yep. So I'm just going to go 
I'm just gonna fetch up a basic planes and place a guard as aid. It's very likely that this is a blue-white control deck. It could also be elementals, but a lot of the elementals decks have been playing Elishnorn, the new one. So that way, so that would that which would mean they can't play the Kahira. Uh, yeah, it looks like blue-white control to me. So prismatic ending on this. Yep, fine. So we're gonna start this Urza Saga train, um, and I think I'm actually just gonna like play out Saga Spear Ornithop. Yeah, because that way if we hit a if we hit a hammer off the top we can play hammer and then paladin and immediately equip which is pretty good um and if we don't hit exactly that then i'll probably just uh play ink moth and start making concert all right so just leaving up counter spell got it okay it's not bad it's not bad like this and then if they do like to ferry here it's pretty obnoxious but mm. cycling shark typhoon for no sharks my favorite that's that's good honest magic right there that's just pay to discard okay and i'm not gonna play around dress down here i will however respect archmage charm and um uh counter spell so i'm just gonna go ahead and make another dude all right and i will also probably just get a yeah just get a hammer to threaten um and uh, yeah we this and then attack for five we can make it six by animating which i think i will okay archmage charm it is Oh, just, okay, sure, sure. In that case, I will not animate it. I will just eat your dude. So what do we got here? And I don't hate just playing Core Outfitter here. Like um, animate, bolt myself, play Core Outfitter, equip to the Ink Moth Nexus and go to attacks. Cause they can't, they can't seal an Ink Moth. They can seal a Const Fairy. Okay, bounce a Construct probably, sure. All right. Yep, you got it. So it's kind of rad. So we can bolt in a Maria's Call, play Paladin. I can't imagine we don't play Paladin here. We just move the the hammer to the Ornithopter, Shadow Spear to Ornithopter, and yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll just Paladin here. Start there. Um, and so the question. So I'm definitely gonna put this here, right. Like that's that's the easy part. Um, so might as well do this as well. And then we can play the drum. Yeah, I kind of like this. Yeah, so we play the drum, use the paladin to animate the nexus, put the hammer on the nexus, and yeah, this is great. And then punch a bunch of damage and kill the Teferi, leaving the shadow spear on the ornithopter. Yep. Okay. You, you, Teferi, you. All right. Yep. I like this. Probably, it's very likely to get Teferi off the board and potentially kills them. Yep. There's this. Okay. Pitching. Supreme Verdict, huge fan. Take out the Ink Moth, makes sense. So they might have another, um, might have another stupid, stupid guy. <laughs> um, so I'll move this here now and I think I'll actually move here. I'm actually gonna move the Shadow Spear to the, the Pure Steel because I can absolutely see a world where they are splashing just a little bit of red for Fire Ice and making sure this thing doesn't die to Fire Ice seems Seems nice. But we do have lethal on board. So do they have another wrath is the question. Yeah, if we move the shadow spear to the ornithopter and attack into a solitude. Solitude comes down, kills this, I'm sure, and then gets blocked by or blocks the construct. Construct lives. Um they gain three, which is annoying. I guess we have with the paladin. Is this uh wrath? No. Okay. Uh trying to rip a prismatic ending off the top would be my guess. But so many shark typhoons. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, so they can't Archmage Charm, which is really nice. Okay. So so I'm actually gonna hold the Amarius call, because I don't think there's a lot of value to playing it. Um and I think I'm just gonna put the Shadow Spear on the Ornithopter and attack with all three creatures. Yeah, so because I don't want to leave I don't want to be a put load up on the paladin uh, i guess i could nah so if i put this here it's a six if we put this here they're just dead yeah i'm just gonna force them to to answer everything keep it simple okay yeah <laughs> when in doubt math is for blockers just kill them all right so sideboard definitely want the march and the haywire might because they are usually a chalice of the void deck so frustrating uh, <laughs> blacksmith skills are probably coming in too and probably the needle 
name two time raveler um solitude i don't hate in some number because it is an ambush threat but let's see what we're what we're cutting so we're definitely cutting the core outfitter um the ornithopters are absolutely coming out okay so we'll have enough to so definitely i like cutting a drum here as well we can bring in like one solitude it's a flash threat sometimes you need to clear their solitudes out of the way um i i don't hate that it's also just like a reasonable flash body it attacks for three it exiles their stupid sharks um yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, we, we can obviously ask for more from a hand, but I like turn one Esper. Let's do this. And we'll go ahead and hold the Temple Garden for as long as possible. Um, yeah, as much as I would like to get the aid into play, I think getting the Sentinel out gives us a lot more value. It can just, it can make their turns incredibly awkward, which I like. Because now if they want to take, like, their whole turn off to um, kill the Sentinel, then I'm pretty happy with that. Um they want to do something else yeah it looks like a prismatic ending to me where they're gonna pay the tax yep yep cool so now i think i'm just gonna go saga aid um okay so now i think i'm gonna go <laughs> ink moth aid and potentially just try to kill them yeah i think i would yeah i like trying to kill them next turn because then we start making constructs immediately following all right and if they have another removal spell then we just like go urza saga giver of runes ee -E for one okay we did bring in needle correct yep okay i thought we did but yeah and so now i don't have a lot of incentive to do much of anything that's kind of fun i think i'm gonna just like ginger brute let's go get my chip shots in okay yeah just get get my my ones in um yeah not gonna play out the giver here no reason to, to play more into the ee -E. yeah i just want them to waste their mana as much as possible yep all right they're hitting their land it's not cool um but let's see okay um yep we will shock that in now i think we're just gonna you know yeah because now we can uh, make a construct and then make another con and go get needle fetch away pop it now deluge okay man oh god if we had march here <laughs> oh man all right so they're gonna go back up to five cards yeah so we're gonna make a two two and then it'll be a second four four yeah, so they need to find an answer to the saga now. But yeah, the, the solitude's just as bodies, like being reasonable chip shots here. Like, so you get in your one point, your two points, maybe they fetch a couple times. All of a sudden, solitude can kill in like three, four attacks. All right, cool. Yeah, let's just do this. Does it resolve? Okay, wow, it resolved. Okay, yeah, uh, I will do pithing needle. Naming engineered explosives. Some people have been asking, oh, what do you bring in needle for? Almost every time it's EE, um, <laughs> but there there are times when it's not for sure. But most of the time, it, um, not in this matchup, it's not because usually this deck doesn't play a lot of EEs. But dress down. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and flash in a hammer in response. If they counter spell, then that's fine. Yep. Put it there. So they absolutely have to have a removal spell here, right? There's. I'd be surprised if they took this line if they didn't. But I like making them use their removal spells rather than just letting them keep doing whatever they want. And so of note, when the dress down resolves, this will become a a zero zero that gets plus ten plus ten, assuming the hammer actually attaches. Um, and then they'll take eleven. I'm happy with that. I could also flash in the solitude while the dress down's in play to just get a free three two. Because when you when you evoke one of the elementals with a dress down in play, it loses the sacrifice ability. Um, hmm. Like we don't actually care. Okay, take one because we just keep getting to threaten so much damage. Yeah, I think I'm fine with this. And we do have a remove for it, but hopefully we just like find a, a paladin all right yeah take 12 it may have been greedy to to not kill the the construct but okay so i like sentinel here start there mm, yeah come off and i'm assuming this is getting countered but it is what it is okay honestly i'm surprised um yeah i mean i'm just gonna get it I'm gonna keep it real and i think we're just gonna pass here probably just gonna block with the ginger brute what you got for me opponent okay this matchup is also the reason i don't play flooded strand in my deck even though i have the the sweet old ones because um you never sometimes you will needle flooded strand but you never want to needle um all right all right um you never want to needle your own fetch lands i'm just gonna do this now put it on the sentinel Oop. oh it's getting the plus one because of the uh the engineer explosives that's funny i don't think they have 11 mana let's check one is less than 11 okay that's a fun little one so 
What's the plan? Probably just gonna block with um, Ginger Brute. Seems seems pretty reasonable, but we'll see. And if we hit a land, of course, we can just hard cast the Solitude, which is pretty rad from there. This is an instance where it is nice, like, okay, the Solitude is a body, it can come down, control decks, do have creatures now um and then also the <laughs> um so i think we have to no i think it's annoying it's man to jump with the ginger brute here mm, no can't can't have that unfortunately because they will very like that one first of course and then yeah they do gain 12 which super sucks but the good news is there aren't really many permanents that are good for them to bounce here. Like, what do you bounce? You know, about the stone forge, the needle, and then, okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Pop it now. You should pop it now. <laughs> All right. Fine. Okay. Well, I was right. They are, in fact, a chalice deck. So I'm just going to do this. That way we can we can chip in at the Tef. Get everybody in the Tef. Kahira. All right. So I think we just pass here. Another Saga would be incredible. They have two Deluges, right? These are all dead permits. <laughs> I'm hoping if we if we continue to, like, you know, draw some more lands, I do hope that we end up casting Amarius because that would be rad. Mm, probably wasn't supposed to fetch. Don't think it matters. Oh, that's so unfortunate. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I have much choice here. I think we just gotta gonna kind of hope to to battle here. Yeah, this game has slipped away. It seem just hard casting a solitude. If they have a hard cast solitude, I am fine yeah, wrapping this one up because I just don't think we have enough with the chalice in play. All right, so kind of like where we're at. Um. Like this is fine. Um, I like the one March. Yeah, this is good. Hopefully our cards just line up a little bit better. This is definitely a matchup where I would like to have Spell Pierce, but okay. We don't have an Equipper and we have one land. This hand, however, is, um, I think I bought him the Blacksmith skill. Yeah, let's get Blacksmith skill or March. If they just have Chalice though, we lose the lose the game basically on the spot. Okay, they mulligan to six as well. I appreciate the, you know, <laughs> the consideration there. Fetch for a Plains on one and let's get ya. Maybe we'll just rip Cigar to Zade off the top like monsters. I'd be, I'd be a fan. Okay, all right. Um, so let's attack for one. I don't really want to play this Paladin out. I don't really want to play the Hammer out either. So I think I'm just going to play neither one. <laughs> Hopefully they just go like land, um, they go land Chalice, and then we get to march the Chalice on our end step and go from there. Yeah, so one thing I was considering is how few fetchables we have. And so I wonder if we're just supposed to cut a wire mite entirely and just go mono white. I feel so smart. I feel so smart. <laughs> it's not like any of my lines were excellent, but um, blue white, like reasonably so, will often keep hands based off the power of chalice. So it is pretty reasonable for them to have kept this hand. Okay, so I think I am just going to go paladin, hammer, draw card. Yeah, yeah, I'm about it. Maybe we'll rip, we rip a zero. We don't have many zeros, but I do like drawing cards. And then they also have to use removal. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> this, this could be much worse. So yeah. Now the next, the other reason is, I guess I, there, there wasn't a really another good turn to stick that in the next couple turns if I wanted to make constructs at all. So I like just using my mana, getting in under a counter spell if possible, going from there. Um, the, the saga obviously was an incredible draw, but why you play them right all right all right um i will take any cheap artifact off the top for 500 yeah because the goal is just pressure them every turn until they die it looks like they might be do they have a third land no third land it was six with chalice fire ice like that's, <laughs> that's not a bad keep by any stretch sometimes ah no boo are they trying to think if they should prismatic ending now maybe if they have march then this is pretty easy march on the oh okay sure so hammer i mean i'll take one um yeah yeah so if we play this we can make a construct we can't double construct those do this it also doesn't play as as badly into a dress down look at this ginger brute he's gotten in for four points of damage he's a he's a good little guy he's definitely a little guy right discourse can y'all can y'all tell me i don't think they have spreading seas um so i will i will just go get it on the end step make a dude okay 
I'm absolutely making a dude. And so there is a reality where you, like if this was on zero, I would have just passed priority because they have to pop it. Um, and if they don't, oh, what? Uh, okay, needle name engineered explosives. Whack, whack. They have dress down probably. Take six, okay. So they've got to have an answer to the needle, right? So they're just gonna go like three mana Tef, down tick, bounce the needle. Target player, they draw two. All right, they have a Wrath here. Wrath would be good. But they don't have double white. Mm. Yeah, so Tef, down tick on the needle. Popping the EE doesn't do that much here. That's awkward. Can't dress down and EE, I don't know. They need a lot of specific things to kind of dig out this spot with only three cards. All right, yeah, sure. I'll float mana, whatever. <laughs> Gotta send, send that message. Okay. So I will send the Ginger Brute at the Teferi. That way, if they do have Dress Down, which is what this smells like, um, we get the Teferi off the board at least. Okay. Um, I also don't hate just leading with Paladin. If they have a Counterspell, they die to combat damage. Unless they have like Counterspell plus White Card plus Solitude. Uh, that doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. You got it. And so, yeah, I'm just going to kill the Teferi right now. And obviously they could have like um, Leyline Binding or Prismatic Ending to clear the needle. <laughs> I can't, I can't answer everything. So I've got to pick what I want to lose to the least. Um, and I like... I like forcing them to use Solitudes early and often, if possible, because all their white cards are other removal spells. So it's a really relevant two for one as opposed to like subtlety, which you're usually pitching like a consider or something along those lines. But yeah, so let's see what we get. It's nice that we get to start making constructs again next turn and then again the turn after that and just yeah just keep because we have th we have a two turn clock with nothing else if we do nothing else to the board right now um but yeah against any deck that might have engineered explosives needle is always a fine card to bring in so any murktai deck scam deck um any like mid-range deck it's gonna be good i I'm not aware that blue white control has been playing a lot of ees but it's not an unreasonable card for them to play um yeah just just took me by surprise a little bit okay so white mana do they have a supreme verdict would be my guess yep yeah. all right you got it all right i guess i'll start making some constructs i don't know i'm a simple man Ooh, we also get to play a stoneforge mystic that's pretty cool um so if i play urza's saga here and play that we still get to make a construct and then the following turn we can make a construct make a construct so we do get to make multiple constructs the rest of the game if we do this yeah that's really good um yeah and like all the constructs will be lethal at all time all right yeah and what are we getting is the question i kind of like cauldra it turns the stoneforge into a threat that they now have to address because cauldra by itself is lethal obviously they could archmage charm it which would be gross i don't know do do, do what i can <laughs> i like pressuring them from multiple angles and I might get drum a drum off of this saga. Or I could get a uh, Haywire Might, which I don't hate. Haywire Might would be pretty rad. It's a body. Um, that way, if they do address the needle, ooh, okay, okay. That's really good. Um, so we'll do that one first. Trigger to resolve. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I, I make a cons here. Tapping both white sources. Yeah. Actually, now that we have the, the skill... I think we just float mana here, right? And then we put the, yeah. Yeah, we don't need to we just get a Haywire Mite here. Surprise, it's a Cauldra. I know, I'm as surprised as you. Did Did I do it? They have three cards, not a lot of cards. So this is why I do generally keep Cauldra in against any like like control because yes, they can Archmage Charm it and that does suck, but it is it turns the Stoneforge into a threat on its own where they have to manage more permanence independently. They have another dress down. Uh, look like an Archmage Charm. Mm, okay, create an XX. Say X is two, count. Yeah, they played that tapped because they didn't want to go to two. Reasonable. The The skill was the was what let me go a little more aggressive here than I probably would have otherwise. Um, absolutely not. Gonna say nope to that. And do you have Solitude? Yeah, there we go. I was pretty, I'm pretty happy with how I played that game. Okay, so, I'm not gonna lie, the first couple matches were way better showings of the new cards than the, uh, than those last matches, but, you know, it wasn't bad necessarily. So, let's go ahead and dive into Hammer Nonsense 2. Okay, so I, when I, when, when we were first talking about this, I thought it was kind of a joke. It's like, oh, just throw four Marius call, and then you have the white count for Solitude, but... The reality is it's it's kind of true because 
oftentimes like you can get to five mana to cast a solitude um not like super often but it does happen in which case that card's just it, it, you know <laughs> i'm really dropping you know some press here that solitude's a really good card um but it is a flexible card whether you want one in the main or not i don't know but i will say solitude is very good against the murktai decks it's fine against scam because sometimes those games also go long um or you can like you can pseudo counter their scam with your own kind of scam. Um, but it's really also quite good against um, Titan specifically. Like who cares if they gain six life, you're not dead. Um, so Titan, it's very good against Yawgmoth, obviously. Like, you know, it sucks that they already drew some cards, but you can clear it off the board and then potentially combo the next turn. Um, it's just it's just a really good card. And playing more Modern Horizons 2 cards in your is a good way to make your deck better. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead, pause for a second, and then when I come back, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up the version that I might play going forward. Okay. This is probably what I would try in my next few leagues. Um, I do think the Solitude version has real legs, the card's just super good. Um, it's very good in the mirror as well, which I didn't mention, but you know, a free removal spell should you know, you should just know that it, it is good in the mirror. Um, whether you want one in the main or not, I don't know. You could absolutely just like move a blacksmith skill in the main, move this to the sideboard. Um, but I've gone mono white basically. Um, because so your mana, <laughs> like the Amerius calls are not actually free. They do cost some life. And with that consideration, I do like cutting some number of like the fetches, obviously going mono white lets you just cut your, cut all the fetches out. Um, and ordinarily in these mono white lists, I would probably run four canopy lands. But because we are taking additional damage from our Mary's calls, um, I could see just playing three or even two of the Horizon canopies and just really have more basic planes. Um, it also did come up a couple times in those games where we ran out of fetch bulls, which I don't think is the norm, but it definitely happened more than I would have liked, um, especially once someone starts besieging you. So. I kind of like this configuration right now. I like I like two in the main. Um, but yeah, so looking at the rest of the list for Haywire Might, I would probably just put like March of Otherworldly. Um, and so here's what you want to if you're you're you know you're messing with the deck, you're trying different builds. This is what you want to do. So I haven't actually done the sideboard mapping, but what I will be doing to figure out what this slot, this one of slot should be, is figuring out what matchup do I want more cards in, figure out what card would go well in that matchup, and then go from there. Oh, um, but yeah, so for right now, I'll probably just put a march in as a bonus. So other fun fact about this version of the deck, much better against mill. But why is it better against mill, you ask? Well, normally hammer, you know, has seven plus 20, so 27 plus 34, you know, 54 white symbols or uh, just mana symbols against Tasha's. So one Tasha's will take more than half your deck out. But when you put four Amiria's calls and a solitude into your deck, you added 32 more, <laughs> more CMC. And then post board against Millie, you add another three solitudes. All of a sudden you can, you can take a Tasha's or two on the chin and you're probably okay. Um, so I don't, I don't hate that. Um, other than that, pretty standard stuff here. Um, Dranith Magistrate, good against Breach, good against Cascade decks. Um, Hollowed Moonlight is really good against like Living End because yeah, they wrath your board, but then they don't actually do anything. Living End is usually a problem because not only do they wrath your board, but then they kill you in like two turns or one turn. Um, so Hollowed Moonlight's good there. We also saw how it was good at multiple spots against Creativity. I haven't played with the card much, so it was... I was pretty impressed with it, even though it does cost two mana. The fact that it has that last line of text, draw a card, pretty nice. And then um, March and Solitudes are just really good removal spells. Uh, especially if you're mono white, you don't have spell pierce, you want all four skills in the 75. Needle's super good. And Sanctifier and Vex, just like really, really good. And so, yeah, I would play Sanctifier and Vex. Um, if you wanted to, you could also just like play a second core outfitter or a... Uh, a seal shaper's gift um, over the solitude, put the solitude in the board, and then just like don't play the second march. But I kind of like, especially if you don't have the haywire. But anyway, this uh, this was some spice. I'm I hope everyone enjoys it. It's definitely something that I had not considered. People have asked, oh, can we put solitude in the deck? And the answer was always no before. But I think kind of after playing the the shining shoal mono white humans deck that's been running around, I you know I got to thinking maybe we can make that work in hammer as well. And so far seems 
seems pretty reasonable. You have to play your deck a little bit differently. Sometimes you hold a white card, but I like it so far. And, um, you know, hope y'all enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see y'all in the next video.